Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to worship. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We turn to our orders of service. The power is yours to shape and to teach, to mend and to raise, to love and forgive. Come, Spirit of power. The truth is yours to live out in life, to lead the humble, to proclaim to all. Come, Spirit of truth. The authority is yours to challenge the unjust, to bring down the arrogant, to judge the world. Come, Spirit of authority. The Lord be with you. So we're going to um, continue in worship with our first hymn, Jesus is Lord. So loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So we pray together. Between our words and our actions, there is a gap, a gap filled with indecision and lack of care. The larger this gap grows, the further away you seem. O God of active word and loving deed, forgive us and help us to fill the empty space with love that flows from you through us. Help us who sing we worship and adore you to find a way to live our praise and adoration, to find ourselves in you. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so as God's forgiven people, let's stand and say together the Gloria. <coughs> glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth 
Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so let us prepare ourselves for the Word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. Please do be seated. Our first reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. So we turn to our hymn sheet and there we'll find Psalm 25, our psalm set for this Sunday. I invite you to respond with the verses printed in bold. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let the man who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. For you, for. remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think of me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. Right. 
Please stand. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question, if you will tell me the answer. Then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts may be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please do be seated. Authority. It's a difficult thing. Some people, we are told, have natural authority. I'm sure you can think of some people that you have met like this. What made this authority natural? Was it their learning, their presence, their manner? Other people need to stamp and shout to assert their authority. And I'm sure we've met people like that too. At this time when the government is using its authority to compel us to wear face masks, to restrict our social lives, our gatherings, even how we say goodbye to our dead, this question of authority is a very pertinent one. There are some who disagree with the decisions made by the government, too far or not far enough. But there are others who question the government's authority to do this in the first place, who are they to tell me I can't? Where do they get the right to tell me I must? Even if we're not going on marches against the wearing of face masks or spending hours online reading conspiracy theories, it's hard to accept things that restrict our lives, even if we do accept that they are for our own good and the good of our neighbours. I wonder if you've ever tried to say yes while shaking your head or no while nodding. It's not easy. Our bodies often reflect what we are thinking without us realising it. The parable in today's gospel helps us to reflect on how the various people in Jesus' time responded to instruction and authority and perhaps also how we do. The parable, that parable of the two sons, which we have the engraving of on the front of our order of service, that parable is Jesus' response to unanswered questions around what is his authority. This encounter takes place immediately after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem 
and the cleansing of the temple, provoking community leaders to challenge his authority. It highlights the tension between institutional authority and divine authority. The religious leaders believe they are on the side of God and have a divine authority because of their role and titles. And Jesus is seen to be challenging this. I suspect the elders' mindset would be something along the, the lines of, who do you think you are? Jesus' response to this, of course, is not to give a straight answer, but to ask questions. The priests and the elders saw through the trick of the questions, which at their heart asked the same question back to them. Who do you think that you are? And they didn't answer. Since they didn't answer, Jesus instead tells them that parable, which is usually understood to challenge those who claim to be following God's laws, but in reality do not. Those who say the right things, but whose lives do not reflect the will and the love of God. It is also a question of identity. Both are sons of the Father. So the expectation would be that they would both say that they would do whatever he asked and then do it. The two sons respond in opposite ways, but then each changes his mind. Both sons could be described as hypocrites. That is, both say one thing and do the other. However, Jesus' question is telling. Which of the two did the will of his father. Jesus' contrast, if you like, between right belief and right practice, or what is your starting point, and how did you finish? The tax collectors and prostitutes numbered among Jesus' followers would have been seen by the religious elite as evidence that Jesus, like John the Baptist before him, was not the Messiah, nor even a respectable rabbi. But Jesus suggests that those who were the lowest of the low in the eyes of the religious leaders were actually doing what God wanted of them, while they, the chief priests and the elders of the people, were not. There is another way of answering the parable's question in strict terms. That answer is neither of them. It raises the possibility of a third option, to say and to do the right thing, to combine right belief and understanding with right practice. And again, this comes back to identity. As a people who share the same Heavenly Father as Jesus, the expectation would be the same for us as for him. Perhaps our lives and words might reflect more of the Father's authority. Perhaps this is a source of that natural authority, of living or striving to live in accordance with God's plan for us so that his love shines through us. I suspect this approach would be helpful too when considering earthly authority and the current restrictions on our lives. If we focus on our identity as members of a wider community, not as individuals. It's easier to accept the restrictions to our liberty. Not how do these in restrictions impact me, but how my actions impact the community of which I am a part. If we focus on identity and not authority, perhaps this week we need to pray Loving Father, help us to know we are your children, to understand all that means with our minds and to live it out in our lives. Amen. So we come to our affirmation of faith on page six. 
Let's stand. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who believes in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Encouraged by our fellowship with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Ethelbert the King and all the saints, let us now make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit or kneel. Loving God, we are asked to consider this morning authority and identity. We pray for your church. For our archbishops, Justin and Stephen. For our bishop, Richard. For our incumbents. And all those with authority in the church. We pray, Lord, that they will always remember from where that authority comes, that it comes from you. That it comes from speaking and acting in reflecting your love and your will for the world. We pray, Lord, that as a church we may reflect that identity as children of you, our Father in heaven. That we may try to act as one loving family. That we may do your will. we may be the yeast in the flour, bringing about the transformation of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too, Lord, for those with earthly authority, those in national and local government, those scientists who advise government, that at this difficult time, those with power may govern in the needs of the many and not the few, that they may be given gifts of wisdom and discernment, strength to make difficult decisions, and courage to stand up for the right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As summer turns to autumn, as the evenings draw in, as the leaves fall from the trees, Lord, we pray for those who look to this season with anxiety, those who are fearful, those who are lonely. We 
We pray, Lord, that you will uphold and strengthen them. Give them hope. Give them courage. We pray particularly for those who work in our care sector and in the health service. Preparing for whatever may come. We pray too, Lord, for those who are ill at this time. This morning we pray particularly for Jean, for Vic, for Tony, for Sally, for June, for Lewis, for Janet and for Eileen and for any known to us. Loving God, pour out your gifts of healing and wholeness upon them. And guide the hands of those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quiet in this holy place, we bring our own prayers before you, our Father in heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand for the peace? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. From a safe distance, let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Loving God, through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands has made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, in all matter. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, for all your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with a love stronger than death, he made for all a perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night before he died, he came to table with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Father, send your Holy Spirit on us now. May this bread and this wine be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Come to the table of the Lord, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loves you so much that he gave himself for you. Come because it is his will that you should meet him here. Glory to you, living Saviour and Lord. Amen. In making a spiritual communion, may, you may like to join with me in this prayer. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come 
spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so longeth thy soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my need day and night, while they daily say unto me, Where is thou thy God? Now when I think there upon I pour out my heart by myself. For I went with the multitude and brought them forth into the house of Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God, who gives patience and encouragement, give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Rest upon you and all those that you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him. Father's pleasure, 
pray together our closing prayer. Thank you, Father God, that we are your church, the body of Christ in the world. We're grateful for our Sunday life and the worship that equips us for the days when we're apart. Help us see afresh the possibilities of our everyday lives. May we know your presence with us in the pressures and the potential of the week. Help us to leave traces of grace wherever we are and whatever we do. Go in peace. Do what is honourable, just and pure. Remember all that you have learned and received and heard that is of God. And do his will. In the name of Christ. Amen.